Merci. Oh, yes, I be. Oh, it is well with me. I want to turn to your neighbor and say, In the name of Jesus, I be. Oh, oh, yes, I be. Oh, yeah. And now say, It is well with you. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, oh yes, I, oh yes, I, tell him you will reach your goals in the name of Jesus, I, hey, oh yes, I, oh yes. I want you to prophesy to yourself and say it is well with me in the name of Jesus it is well with me my health is well everything about me is well my family is well in the name of Jesus I want you to begin to appreciate God for another opportunity to be in his presence and say father I thank you and I bless your name because today is the day you have made it and I will be glad and I will be rejoicing in you. Hey, in Akaba Sundali Kabayende, Father, you have never called your people to worship in vain. And Father, we are here to receive from you. And whatever we are believing you for, Lord, we shall see it in the name of Jesus. And we declare that it is well with us. It is well with my, our lives. It is well with our family. It is well with the church. It is well with our career. It is well with everything you have committed into our hands. And I want you to shout, it is well with me. You can shout so that the devil can hear you loud and clear. It is well with me. And I want you to look at that situation you are believing God for. And shout it louder. It is well with me. Hallelujah. Sometimes the devil needs to hear it that it is well. In that situation, in that challenge, it is well. You are coming out strong and better. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you. The Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. And I want you to know today that it is well with you, whether the devil likes it or not. I want you to shout it louder to, to his ears and shout, it is well with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. And I agree with you. I join my faith with you. And I believe with you that it is well with you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word that will come forth. We thank you, Lord, because it will bring light. And it will bring understanding. We thank you because it will bring results. In the name of Jesus. None of us will live here the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. Something will happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And I want to appreciate the shepherd of this. Our church, our daddy. And our pastor, thank you so much for another opportunity to bring God's word to his people. My prayer for you is that you will always go up in the name of Jesus. Your wife always said that you'll be beautiful in, your, in her eyes. <laughs> and I'm praying that you'll be beautiful in the eyes of the church in the name of Jesus. And in the eyes of Jesus, more importantly, in the name of Jesus. The topic I have, and I thank all the ministers in the house, the prayers. And uh, we thank God for the support of every of the department god bless you may the lord continue to uphold us now the topic i was given is to talk about the benefit of belief of faith the benefit of faith i'll call it my faith my benefit can you say that my faith my benefit praise the lord at redemption god has already given every one of us a measure of faith we can see that in luke chapter 19 verse 13 so as a result, it's our access to our inheritance, our faith, our belief in God, our believing God for anything we are, we are believing God for. Having faith in that thing we are believing God for is our access to our inheritance. So we are talking about faith, but when we are talking about faith, we are talking about Bible-based faith or Bible-based belief. Whatever thing you believe God is biblically based. It's not you are believing God ab abstractly. Or your belief is centered on the word of God. Or it's centered on what God said concerning that thing. And you believe God for that. And you have faith that 
who, that God that has written it will bring it to pass. So that is what we are talking about. Our Bible faith is a heart-based faith. It's not an intellectual faith. It's not the one that, you know, you try to reason with your mind. No, your mind cannot contain that kind of faith. It's a heart-based faith. It's a faith that does not see before it believes. It believes and then it sees. Hallelujah. That's the, the kind of faith we are talking about. The word says seeing is believing, but the Bible faith says believing is seeing, like Pastor has said. On the journey of faith, we do not see results before we believe. We believe to see the expected result. That is the difference between us and they that are in the world. Here in, this, in, in our kingdom, we begin to believe before we see that thing. But in the, over there in the world, they want to see. They want to see evidence. Like in the court, they want to see evidence before they believe your case. But here in the kingdom of God, we begin to believe first. Rabo Shikayanda, we believe first and then we begin to see. Psalm 27 verse 13 says... I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. So we believe to see. Tell your, yourself, I believe to see. You can say it louder, louder. We are in the church. I believe to see. Hallelujah. Our text will be taken from Mark chapter 11 verse 23 to 24. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, can you say believe, that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. You are not limited. Tell yourself, I am not limited. God is not limiting, limiting you in your request. Say, you will have whatsoever you have said. That means you need to say something. We are going there. 11.24 says, therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you have you will have them. So God was tells us in that scripture that we can have what we ask for in prayer by simply believing that we already have it. By simply believing that you have already have it, you will have what you are asking God for. That it means before you begin to pray, you have to make up your mind that I believe that I'm going to get the result. I'm going to, I believe that I'm, God is going to answer me. If you do not believe, don't bother praying. Believing has to go. You have to believe in the prayer you are offering to God. You are saying to God that this thing I'm about to ask God, I believe I will get it. That is why you, that, from that point, you start praying. You already made up your mind that the God you are serving will answer that prayer. So you don't doubt before you believe. You believe before you even start praying. This means as you are praying, know that you already have your answer or breakthrough. Or breakthrough. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hallelujah. So it is one thing to pray. And it's another thing to believe in practical terms that God will do what you are asking him for. Hallelujah. There was this open heaven I read, I, I think 2019 or 2009, I can't remember. In one of those open heavens, um, Gio gave an illustration of a priest who called for a prayer meeting one Sunday afternoon concerning the challenge of uh, drought. It has not been really in the particular area. So he called for a meeting. So the congregation gathered to pray. You know, the priest now looked around and said, um, why, why are you people here? Are you are not ready to pray? And they were like, oh, that is why we are here. We are here to pray. And the priest was like, if you are here to pray, where are your umbrellas? Where are your raincoats? Because if you are praying that it's going to rain, that is, you believe, you need to come with your rain jacket, you need to come with your raincoat, that, and the, or your umbrellas. Because you know that the prayer is going to be answered. So if the prayer is going to be answered, that means you will get drenched if you didn't come with your umbrellas and your, and your raincoats. So the, he now told them, you are not ready. You, are not, you have not made up your mind that God is going to answer this prayer. So it's about action. Can you tell yourself action? You act in the word of God if you believe. You need to act. You don't say you believe. It's not a mental belief. It's a hard belief and it's an action belief. Hallelujah. So when they now went back and brought their raincoats and their umbrella and they began to pray, God honored them and it rained. Hallelujah. So believing is action based. It's an action word. Faith is an action word. Hallelujah. We are talking about living faith. What is faith, by the way? Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The emphasis on that verse are the phrases, things hoped for and things not seen. So faith involves the future. They hope for. The things not yet seen. 
Faith involves the unknown, the unseen, and the unsettled. You don't know exactly what will happen. You don't know the what, you don't know the when, you don't know the where, you don't know the how, but you believe. Hallelujah. You believe, you trust God. You trust God. Hallelujah. So someone said about hope, I, I, I think I just, he said, hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. Faith is the courage to dance it today. Hallelujah. Hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. But faith is the courage to dance it today. So faith and hope go hand in hand. Hallelujah. So faith is putting God's word to work. Believing God is not a man. He says what he means and he means what he says. Faith is not just believing that God can do something. It is being moved to do something to prove that we believe. Hallelujah. Faith is knowing God's will as contained in his word and going his way to actualize the same thing. You follow God. You follow what he's saying. You believe his word and you follow what he wants you to do. You go his way, not your way. Faith is sharing responsibility with God in the light of scriptures to have one's desire delivered. You share responsibility. You have a part to play in every miracle. I think it was Bishop Wayne that said, if all, you, all the miracles that come to you, if you do not have a part to you, it's not, it's not the right one. So faith is obedience, complete obedience and consistency. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe him. It commits him to fulfill his word. When you obey the instruction, God is, see, God is, is, um, God is confined with the words in his, in his word. You, he cannot go outside his word to bless you. So when you act based on his word, you commit him to fulfill his own part. His part is already done. You have to do, you have to step up and do your own part in everything that you're asking God for. Then you commit him to do for you. Hallelujah. So faith is alignment, heart alignment with God and his word. Faith is being on the same page with God. Faith is having no opinion or belief that is contrary to the word of God. To what God said concerning that particular issue. You don't have contrary opinion. You don't have unbelief. You believe God and you believe God. Faith is what you do. What you must do to have what you want. Faith is a doing word. It's an action word. It is a doing word. Hallelujah. So why is this faith important? Why is this faith, having this faith important? The Bible made us to understand in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. He said, the just shall live by faith. Faith is your lifestyle. Hallelujah. You live by faith. You breathe by faith. You exist by faith. You, 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 are, you become who you are by faith. You are, a, you are a spirit being by faith. You operate in this realm by faith. You cannot do without faith. The events of our lives are according to our faith. Every man's future is as designed by his faith. Whatever you believe is what you will manifest. So if you want to know what you believe, check through your life. And find out what is manifesting. Then you will know exactly what you believe. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's another reason we must have faith. Because without faith, it is impossible. To please God. For he that cometh to God. Must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. I love that word. Diligently seek him. You don't seek God anyhow. You seek him diligently. So unless we trust God. And not in ourselves. We cannot please God. Unless we believe that God will take care of us. We cannot please God. We are, some of us are trusting on our salaries, on whatever we are doing. We need to trust God. We need to trust the source. Not what you can see because that thing can go and you'll be left without anything. I pray that you will trust God entirely in the name of Jesus. Unless we rely on God's power and not our own resources, we cannot please God. And we are here to please God in all we do. How are you pleasing God in what you do, in what you say, in how you react? How are you pleasing God? Now, let's jump into the benefits of faith. Hallelujah. 
because of time. Benefits of faith. Faith is the key to power. Can you say power? You can say it louder. Power. power. The presence of faith is the presence of power. The fullness of faith is the fullness of power. Those who walk in faith never beg for power. Faith people are movers and shakers because of the availability of power. Acts 6, 8 says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen had faith and he had power. And the Bible says he did great wonders and miracles among the people. God is calling us to the place of power through faith. Hallelujah. God is inviting us to come up to the higher level where our prayers will meet with power. You can't be powerless. A faithless Christian is a powerless Christian. God is calling us to a new level where you will carry the power of God. Not just for yourself, but for your generation. Not just for yourself, but those that are under your influence. You, you influence your environment with the faith and the power you carry. Men who have faith have the power to challenge religion. They have the power to challenge status quo. Men of faith carry power and easily activate the change they want to see. They activate the change button no matter how complicated that situation is. Faith is power. They use their declaration, men of faith and of power, use their declaration to alter the course of negativity. They speak new realities into being, men of faith. They don't take no for an answer. They challenge, they say, why is this thing this way? It is not according as what God has said. So why is it? They challenge it. They don't give up. They keep pressing until there is a change. Until something is altered in the spiritual realm. These are men of faith and power. Hallelujah. Faith is key to glory. Can you say glory? You can shout it. Glory. Hallelujah. John eleven forty 40 said, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God? Jesus mentioned the glory of God, which Martha should see if she believed. By Jesus' word, the belief of Martha was supposed to empower her to see the glory of God. So your faith empowers you to see the glory of God. Faith moves people to the realm of possibilities. Life becomes glorious when your faith is alive. It's a glory. Faith brings you to glory. It takes you to glory. The glory of God is not a matter of words. It's an experience. You experience the glory of God. It's not just talking about the glory. Your belief and your faith in God is only a qualification. You need to see the glory of the splendor of our God. When you encounter God's glory, your results will change. Hallelujah. And I pray for you. That you will encounter the glory of God today in the name of Jesus. When I look at Moses, before Moses encountered the glory, he spoke the words of God to the children of Israelite. Yet they strayed in his absence. They began to make that uh, golden calf. But when he encountered the glory, they couldn't even behold his face. Hallelujah. When you encounter the glory of God, you wouldn't need to announce to your generation. They will see it. They will see who you are. They will see God's, God's work in your life because the glory speaks. Glory speaks. It's shown. It's, it's, people will see when you are coming, they will know that this one is a carrier of the glory of God. When you encounter the glory of God, the fragrance and the potency of his presence is infused into you. And no power of hell can contain or confine you. The glory of God speaks. Can you say the glory speaks? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. It said, but we all 
we all, not, no one is exempted, we all, with an open, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed. The glory changes you into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The glory changes you. And it is not changing you today. It doesn't change you tomorrow. It changes you from one stage, one level to another, one level to another. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith is the key to blessing. Can you say blessing? blessing. Faith connects a person to the blessing. To believe or to have faith is to see goodness of the Lord. Faith is the doorway to your blessing. You cannot please God without faith. Faith is the currency we use to transact business in the spiritual realm. It's your currency. It's your spiritual currency. Faith is key to wholeness. Another benefit is a key to wholeness. And we can see that in Luke chapter 8 verse 48. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. My question when I was reading that scripture is that, could it be that the woman may not have been healed except she had believed in Jesus Christ. She had believed and had faith in him. Maybe she couldn't have been healed. Could it be that the same people that were following Jesus didn't have faith, didn't believe because they were all touching him. You can be following Jesus if you do not believe or have faith in him. You will not get anything. There were crowds following him but only one got May you be that one that will touch and get value from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Faith makes whole. Faith heals. Faith repairs and restores lives and destinies. That woman has suffered for 12 long years, but she didn't give up on the possibility of her healing. She still believed God for healing. If I tell you, that is another story for another day. If I begin to analyze what that woman went through, even to come out and to begin to press, and she could, with her frail body, she couldn't compete with the crowd. And she decided and said, you know what? I can't compete with this crowd. Let me go. Let me touch the word. And he touched the hem of the garment. If we begin to analyze what that hem contains, you know, he just, she just went for the word. I can't compete with the competition and the struggle. I am too tired. I've been suffering for this for, for 12 years. He went and taught, he bent down. And told Jesus. May you touch Jesus with, you, with his word in the name of Jesus. You don't need to compete. Go for the word. You don't need to press. Keep fighting. Go for the word. And believe. When you keep hearing, your faith will rise. And you begin to do something. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. No matter how long your challenge has persisted, still believe God. For a change, what is that impossibility that you are currently facing? Still believe God. Dare to believe God for solution. Have faith in God. Have faith. Believe him. Believe God for specific solution you want to see. We have written prayer points. Believe God for them. See your, those prayer points being answered. See them answered. Don't say, I'm still praying. You are still praying, but see them answered. Believe that God is going to answer you. There is no carryover of prayer points this year in the name of Jesus. 2022 prayer point will end in 20, 2022. You are not carrying it over. No carryover. Can you shout no carryover? No carryover. Believe God for that particular result you wish to receive. Believe God. Have faith. Believe God that it is possible. That with God all things are possible. Believe God for that miracle, for that breakthrough, for that open door, for that destiny helper. Believe God that he can change that situation, that he can turn it around. Believe God. Just as that woman believed God and took action in faith, by faith. Back up your own faith with action and you shall have results in the name of Jesus. Faith was the access key that opened the door of the miracle of that woman. Rise in faith. Step out in faith. Take actions by faith. And your faith will pay off. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, we have read it before, it is impossible to please God. Have faith. 
have faith. I want you to declare to yourself, I walk by faith. My faith make me whole. In the name of Jesus. It may not be sickness, it may be another thing, but your faith will make you whole. Because you serve a God that makes all things happen for you. Hallelujah. Faith is the cure of, for deficiencies and insufficiencies. We can see that in John 6, 11. The Bible says, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he, distribu he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes and much as they would. Now, there was insufficiency. There is no, there is no way two fishes and uh, whatever loaf of bread can feed the crowd. But Jesus believed God. And he gave thanks. He went ahead, took action, and gave thanks. <laughs> That's another one. You believe God, you, you now say, I know this prayer is answered. You begin to thank God for it. You begin to thank God for it. That's what Jesus did. Why Philip was wondering, how will we? How is it going to be? Using his mental whatever, intellectual, to solve the problem. Jesus went into the spirit. He believed God. And he, to prove that he believed God, he began to thank God. And we know what happened. In the midst of an unsolved problem, Jesus took the wrath of believing God and gave thanks instead of panicking and complaining. At a time when the, when, when the available resources to feed the crowd is scarce, Jesus believed God. Him, himself, is God, though he still believed God and gave thanks. At the time when result was missing, when there is, when you feel that, is God even answering this prayer? I've been praying, there's no result. The result was missing. Jesus believed God and acted on his belief by giving thanks to God. Now we know, after Jesus gave thanks and broke the bread, we saw what happened. There was multiplication. I pray for you. The Lord will visit you mightily in the name of Jesus. So Jesus' faith in God and his subsequent action was the bridge between where he was and where he needed to be. Faith is a bridge. Hallelujah. It was a bridge between expectation and fulfillment of expectation. Your faith in God will connect you to where you need to be in the name of Jesus. It will position you on a higher level. It will take you higher in the mighty name of Jesus. We also see that faith is a victory. It, faith is key to victory and triumph. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God, <laughs> overcometh the word. And this is the victory that overcometh the word, even our faith. Faith is a guarantee for victory any day, any time, anywhere. Faith will take, will make you a victor instead of a victim. A captain out of a captive and a conqueror out of a conquer, of the conquered. Faith confers us with supernatural, you know, mastery over life situations and circumstances. It makes you bold. Faith makes you bold. It doesn't make you timid. The Bible says, by faith, we subdue kingdoms. We obtain promises. We stop the mouths of lions. We quench the violence of fire. We escape the edge of the sword. We wax violent in fight and turn to flight in the armies of the aliens. Hebrew 11, 32 to 34. Faith calms the storm. Hallelujah. It calms the storm. It establishes peace and serenity. The Bible says in Mark, Matthew chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. And he said unto them, why are you fearful? Oh, you little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, what matter of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. That shall be said of you. What manner of man is this person? What manner of woman is this? When he says things, it comes to pass. Hmm. So despite whatever storm you have faced, or you are currently facing, you will arrive at your destination in the name of Jesus. Despite the challenges on your way, your journey will not stop on the way. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Despite the troubles you are dealing with, you will prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. You will come out of whatever storm that wants to swallow you in the name of Jesus. You will come out of every trouble that wants to bury you in the name of Jesus. No evil will prevail over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to declare with me, I will not stop on the way. My progress will not stop on the way. My advancement will not stop on the way. My ministry will not stop on the way. My career, my business will not stop on the way. My finances will not stop on the way. My children, my marriage will not stop on the way. In the name of Jesus. The storms of this world will not stop me on the way. Jesus is in my ship. And I have faith in him. And I will not fail. Hallelujah. So we are going to prophesy to your neighbor. And say to your neighbor, you will not go down. Your influence will not go down. Your progress will not go down. Your success will not go down. Your increase will not go down. Your prayers will be answered. You will accomplish that project. And nothing that concerns you will go down. In the name of Jesus. Have faith in God. For he is for you. And you will not go down. No matter the storms that come to you. Have faith. The Bible made us understand. That with faith. All things. With God all things are possible. And with your faith. All things are possible. Now. Let's talk about with the little time we have. In our journey of faith, what do we do? What do we do to make sure that this faith will continue? Please let me know when my time is up. I don't, it's not showing yet. Hallelujah. In our journey of faith, what do we do? What do we do to sustain this faith? What do we do to make sure our faith increases? What do we do to continue to walk in faith? And the first thing I want to let us know is that you should walk in faith. Consciously walk in faith. Consciously walk in faith. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8 verse 25 and he said unto them where is your faith? And they being afraid wondered saying one to another what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water and they obey him. After Jesus still that storm that wanted to sink the ship he turned to them and began to ask them where is your faith? Because Jesus was expecting them to have faith. Jesus was expecting them to walk in faith, even in the midst of challenges. No matter what you are going through, don't lose your faith. Let your faith remain alive. No matter the challenges that come your way, don't waver in your confidence in God, like the disciples. No matter the troubles that surround you, don't allow the devil to lie to you. That is ex his expertise. To lie to you and make you believe that that will be your end. And I'm saying to somebody, it will not end how the devil planned it in the name of Jesus. It will not end. You will not service negativity this year in the name of Jesus. Remind yourself that you serve a God who can deal with the storms. You are currently facing. Let's look at that storm and say, look, I have a God that is bigger than you, that can deal with you. Remind yourself that, like Jesus, you have the power to command the storm and it will stand still. No matter the fierceness of the storm, remind yourself that God will neither leave you nor forsake you. He is there in that ship with you. You may not feel it. You may not see the wind. You may not see the rain. But your valley shall be filled with the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Remain strong in your faith, no matter how much the challenges of life are. Jesus eventually stilled that storm hmm. that his disciples were scared of. That storm you are facing, it will be stilled. Though. It will be stilled. <laughs> it might look that ah, I'm over my head. No, 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 no. It will be stilled in the name of Jesus. You can rise up in faith and still that storm. So there was really no need for them to be afraid. If they had believed. 
Hallelujah. Three more minutes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Another thing we have to do is pray on. Keep praying. Keep praying. Even if you think that time is running out, keep praying. If you keep praying, keep believing. Even if it looks as if God has forgotten you, keep praying and keep believing. And the Lord will make it happen in the name of Jesus. Confess what you want to believe. What you believe. It's not just about believing it in your heart. Begin to confess it. Begin to speak it. Speak what you want to see into existence. Hallelujah. Speak heavenly words. Speak heavenly words like Jesus. And life will come up in the name of Jesus. And obey. Simply obey. Obey. Obey every instruction God is giving to you. The more you obey, the more heaven releases its resources upon you. And please do not doubt God. It can slow down the process. You will not please God when you doubt. It can slow down the process. May the process of your breakthrough never be slowed down in the name of Jesus. I remember, finally, I remember when Martha approached Jesus. When Jesus came into the town, what was you know, in that place where Martha met him. He refused to move because Martha, he, when he was talking to Martha in the resurrection of life, Martha said yes in the last whatever that you be. He stayed there. He slowed Jesus' movement into coming to town. But when Mary came, Jesus followed. May the Lord follow you to every situation in the name of Jesus. May your unbelief not slow Jesus down. May he not stop, may, he not, may your unbelief not stop Jesus from acting on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, may we stand up and begin to praise God and say, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. I want to invite everyone that want to, you know, this kind of faith we are talking about is a Bible, Bible, Bible faith. It's not just the faith you have anywhere. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Today I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please, please contact the church so that it can help you grow. Let's begin to appreciate God. Say, Father, we thank you for your word today. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. Blessed be. your holy name in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray you know uh thank god for that word that prayer that we said is for people that want to give their lives to christ if you are saying that